The Ukraine crisis marks its 100th day Friday this week. According to Russian Prime Minister, Russia is the target of global sanctions with a number exceeding 6,000. But the opinions of Russia's economy seem to be polarized. Many are saying Russia won't withstand such an economic solo, yet some others are pointing out that Russia's economy is back on its feet. So what is the true picture of Russia's economic state? How resilient is it? And how is Russia finding its way out of the so-called economic isolation? I'm pleased to be joined from Moscow by Dr. Yaroslav Lisovolik, Program Director with the Valdai Discussion Club, an international framework for global leading experts. He's also a member of Russia's International Affairs Council. And I'm pleased to be joined from Singapore by Dr. Tang Ki Wee, the founder and principal economist of the consultancy firm Weibney Economics. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. So let me go to uh, Dr. Lisovolik first. We would like to find out your opinion about exactly what's the current state of the Russian economy. Early in May, the White House says that Russia's special military operation is projected to wipe out the last 15 years of economic gains in Russia. What is your assessment of the state of Russia's economy and how resilient or how robust is it at this moment? Well, I well, think, I think if, you if you look at the main macroeconomic indicators now, it's pretty much a mixed bag. Uh, on the one hand, uh, some of the macroeconomic indicators show stability. Uh, like, for example, if you look at the unemployment rate, it's uh, pretty low at just above uh, 4%, one of the lowest uh, levels that we've seen in the past years. Um, also, uh, if you look at such indicators as fiscal balance, trade balance, Russia has twin surpluses. So Russia has a fiscal surplus um, of nearly 1% of GDP, and in terms of its trade balance, exports significantly exceed imports, and uh, in the course of this year, the trade surplus is projected to exceed 10% of GDP. On the other hand, you do have worrisome developments with regard to some of the other indicators, like, for example, inflation is in the double digits. Uh, it is uh, projected to be at around 15% or even more, and this is several times higher than uh, what we had uh, in the preceding year. And in terms of GDP dynamics, uh, we will have a GDP decline. Um, the the opinion differs on the exact scale, but possibly between 5 to 6% or even more. And this is, again, something that is one of the highest declines that we've seen in, in recent years, even compared to the pandemic period. Dr. Ten, what is your gauge of uh, the kind of uh, health or state of the Russian economy at this moment? Do you also see the mixed bag scenario? Uh, yes, definitely. I mean, but uh, I mean, the, if I just depend on economic data, to me they are not reliable because, like uh, Dr. Lisovili was saying, the inflation figures, the latest I have is for March, and you know the war, the conflict only started around February onwards. So the the latest GDP figures I have are actually for last year. So I cannot, from the data, maybe he has you know, more up to date figures. Uh, uh, they'll be good if you share, but I, I can't tell. But what I use is actually two things, which is the r ruble exchange rate. It used to be 80 before the crisis. It shot up to or weakened to 140 over. Now it's back to 64 as of last Friday. So to me, it's good because, you know, when we have weak currency, it actually devastates the economy. So things to me looking good. Secondly, is the interest rates. Interest rates used to be 10%, it went up to 20%, and now it's back to 11%. So again, high interest rates is actually bad for the economy. So if the interest rates are just back to 11%, which is only 1% above before the crisis, to me, it seems that the Russian economy is doing well. And besides this, there are two other things. Number one, uh, Russia is having a wheat harvest from what Putin announced uh, a few days ago. And that's very good. It's going to bring in more money for the Russian economy. And secondly, they have announced that they are giving a 10% increase to all pensioners. To me, I mean, that's wonderful. I mean, Russia must have some money before they decide to give the rest, uh, pensioners and those minimum wages. So to me, it seems looks good. The figures are looking good.
So despite the unknown figures to you now, it seems that there are at least some signs of uh, uh, relative uh, healthiness of the Russian economy. Let, let's break it down a little bit. Let's look at the GDP. For instance, the International Monetary Fund projects that Russia's GDP will be down by 8.5 percent in the year 2020. But re some reports are saying actually Q1 economy has expanded by 3.5 percent. That's slightly lower than Russia's expectation, but also, of course much higher than what people would uh, what people would expect uh, given the kind of sanctions that strike at the beginning of March and of February. Um, Dr. Lisovolik, what is your gauge of the kind of uh, actual GDP growth that we might see coming out of uh, the, the first quarter? Well, I, I uh, would confirm the figures that you've cited that uh, in the first quarter, indeed, the official figures are at around 3.5%. Uh, increase year on year, but if you look at the monthly breakdown, you do see a deceleration whereby in January uh, the growth in GDP was above 5%, and uh, in March uh, we had year on year increase of around, I think, 1.8%. So there's clearly a decelerating trend. And the assessments, the consensus in Russia right now, if you look at the estimates of um, uh, the economists uh, uh, are at around 8 to 9 percent uh, GDP decline for this year, but it seems like more, more recently these estimates are improving somewhat. And most recently, I think the aid uh, uh, to the president, the economic aid to the president, Maxim Areshkin, uh, cited his estimate of a decline of around 5 percent for Russia's GDP for this year. A lot of experts are pointing to the rising uh, fuel, fossil fuel prices that uh, has actually given Russia a lot of uh, uh, revenue at this uh, critical moment. So, Dr. Tan, how do you look at the importance of the rising crude oil prices and how sustainable is that going to be given that the, law, the war is prolonging into the third month? And uh, do you think that the, the strength of the ruble and the revenue will keep coming to show up the the rest of the year for the Russian economy? Oh, yes, I think I'm, I'm optimistic. Uh, uh, the prices, uh, well, before crisis was $80, now it's about 100, close to 120. So that's additional income for the Russian economy. Going forward, I think, uh, well, this is summer, and all, globally all supplies have been maxed, you know? So I think uh, it's going to be good for uh, the Russian economy. And just that I suspect the Russian economy will soon uh, in, in impose this uh, uh, oil for rubles system, payment system, and that would actually give another boost to oil prices and the Russian uh, revenue. It's been almost three months since the SWIFT network has uh, blocked th seven Russian banks and more uh, financial restrictions are poised to be slapped on Russia. What kind of uh, pressure is that, uh, Dr. Lisovolik, on the Russian financial system, given uh, there is discussion of uh, more uh, action from Western countries on Russia that the Russian economy is, withstand, is withstanding the pressure from the outside and the kind of isolation has actually not brought Russia to its feet? Well, uh, Russia has been uh, devising its own uh, measures to try to compensate for some uh, of these possible measures, some of these possible restrictions, including the development of its own uh, payment system. Uh, there are measures that are being launched with partners uh, with BRICS countries to devise uh, payment systems, uh, common payment systems that would allow to bypass uh, the restrictions coming from uh, the Western economies. And of course, another factor that uh, is being used uh, by Russia is capital controls. So, uh, previously, uh, Russia, Russia's uh, capital account was open, um, and uh, with the onset of this crisis, Russia has imposed capital controls, and this was one of the main measures through which Russia managed to maintain exchange rate stability and relative stability in the financial system. 
What do you see will be the coming months for the Russian economy? Will there be stronger headwinds as the aim of all of these sanctions slapped on Russia is to bring Russia down to its feet, to, to make it unsustainable to continue to wage this war now that Russia seems to be doing okay, at least for the moment, Dr. Lisavolik? I think uh, in the coming months, uh, we may see relative stabilization after the initial shock, obviously, uh, the initial shock was quite significant. Now, uh, with the system starting to adapt to this shock, with the reserves that have been accumulated, they're being put to use. Uh, we do see some signs of stabilization in uh, the most important segments of the macroeconomy. I think we will see some stabilization. But in the longer term, of course, the key question is how long this crisis will last. And then it's up to this factor to decide whether the reserves that have been accumulated by Russia in the run-up to this crisis will be sufficient. Dr. Ten, how do you look at the sustainability of the current state of things for the Russian economy? And given that the West, uh, led by the United States, has not achieved its aim of crippling the Russian economy, what do you think is going to happen to the, to, in terms of the international environment for the Russian economy? Well, the, the, the U.S.-led uh, Western economies tried to uh, impose its uh, oil embargo on Russia. It has failed. You know? I think actually going forward, I'm more optimistic for the Russian economy than for the EU economies. Inflation is hitting them and uh, prices have gone up, uh, petrol, food, everything. And I think in the, when it comes to autumn, winter, they are, people are going to start complaining and it is actually, I, I'm quite pessimistic for Europe because they have no reverse gear. They've done everything to hit Russia and hasn't been effect, effective. Right now, as winter comes, if wheat prices go up, oil prices go up, I fear that we could see a repeat of maybe Arab Spring in Europe. People are angry when people don't have food. Many thanks to my two guests, uh, Dr. Yavoslav Lisovolik from the Vodai Discussion Group and Dr. Ten Kiwi, founder and chief principal economist of the consultancy firm Waveney Economics. Thank you.